I am so excited. Today I've got the Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. This thing is amazing. It's a new interface and it has this, uh, this electronic search dial, the search wheel. And I'm gonna show you all 16 ways how to use it in the next 10 minutes. Hey, welcome if you're new here. My name is Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips where I help you create videos that make a difference and stand out. And if that's the kind of thing you're into, click subscribe right now so you don't miss my tip next week. Now let's just get into these tips and I will show you how this thing works. So one thing you need to know about the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor is it does not come, or at least mine didn't come with a USB-C cable and that's what you need to charge it or if you wanna use it directly plugged in. The first thing we'll take a look at on the machine dial is you can use it to shuttle. Shuttle's basically your JKL. And what you'll do is you just rotate slightly to the left to play backwards. It's more of a playback control than a finding or searching control. Next up we have jog on the search dial. Jog is the most accurate way of going through footage. It's easy to find something down to the frame level with it. So it's great to work at the clip level with jog and it doesn't initiate like a playback. And that's, so shuttle involves like playing back footage, jog does not and it's more finite. So you can see here, I can, as I move it and let go, it stops. Whereas if I do shuttle and let go, it's like I hit rewind on a tape deck or something, okay? So jog is the finite way of controlling like an individual clip. So then the third option over there is scroll. Now scroll is just like jog except that scroll is uh, uh, geared at a higher ratio so you can sift through larger amounts of material faster. Click scroll. Scroll is jog, but like on steroids. It will stop as soon as you let go, which shuttle doesn't. Remember, that's a playback thing. But scroll lets you get from the beginning or end of a timeline much quicker. Okay. My suggestion, if you're not super precise, use scroll if it's a long timeline and use jog if it's like a shorter clip. So next up with the search dial, we have trim in and trim out. So I'm gonna group these together because they're basically opposites of each other. You hold the button, it selects the nearest edit, and it quickly tucks up your timeline or expands it out further. The easiest way to trim something in the world. It's, it's amazing. So what trim in is basically gonna choose, you can see there's an edge right there of the, the clip that's going in. You can roll this right or left, and it's just like butter. Same thing with the trim outside. And what it's doing is it's using that smart indicator thing that's finding the next edit point and it's choosing that. So you don't even have to like park right on a cut. Like I could be like right in between it. And like if I just go to the left a little, you'll see that smart indicator jump to the left. If I go to the right, it's jumping to the right. So that's how it's making those choices. Now that I'm close enough to this cut, I could say I wanna trim the tail of it. So the trim out and I wanna make that shorter. I just do that right there and I wanna trim the other side of it. I do that right there. It's pretty sweet. Trim in, trim out also work in source. They just work differently. So if you tap source and what you're gonna be doing is, let's say let's mark an in and an out on something. And then we click source again. That basically gives us that zoomed in view. If we choose trim in, it's gonna change our in point and in trim out, it changes our out point. So that's kind of a bonus tip. It's, it's a function, a trim in, trim out. They'll behave differently depending on if you're in source or timeline. Okay, I'm gonna hit escape, which will give us our full and clear our markers. So that gives us our full source tape again. And I'm gonna jump back to the timeline. We'll get to our next function. So next up we have roll, if you hold roll, it's gonna find the nearest edit point. Go to the left, go to the right, simple. If you're unfamiliar with roll, what roll is doing is it's taking away a frame from one shot and adding the exact same frame to the other. So at the same time, it happens super fast and that makes the whole timeline the same length from beginning to end. Slide is another type of edit you can do with the search dial. If you double tap roll, basically what that's letting us do is shuffle that clip around in the timeline and it's kind of doing two rolls at the same time to the adjacent clips. And if we have slide, of course we have to have slip. Slip's one of my favorite types of edit modes, and that's basically gonna let you change the inside contents of the shot without changing the edit points. So if those are both lined up on music cues or a sound effect, those get unaffected. And we have slip source, okay? And we have slip destination. So destination is gonna be everything to the right of that smart indicator. Slip source is everything to 
the left of it. I don't know why they didn't call it slip in and slip out. So we've got slip source, changing the inside contents, slip destination, slipping the inside contents of the shot after. What if you want to move a clip to a different part in the timeline? Well, you just hold the split button, which has move underneath it if you have the keyboard in front of you on the clip you want to move, and then you just drag the dial, and it kind of highlights it in orange, and it tells you which way you're going with it, and moves everything else where it needs to go around it. it get, things get out of its way, in other words. You release it, and it drops it wherever you want it to go. So it's a great way to shuffle order of things. You can also change the transition duration by holding the transition duration button and changing the search dial. So longer and shorter cross dissolves are super easy. But guess what? There's more. Not only can you change the duration of the transition, you can also change the type of transition. Maybe you want some Venetian blinds or a, a clock wipe. You can hold down that transition button and, and scroll that wheel until you find the craziest 1980s transition you might want to use that's not a fade or a dissolve. Just don't put it on my video. You can choose that great... Uh, why don't we choose the heart transition? <laughs> and you can quickly have a heart or whatever you want it to be we could change it by holding it and maybe we want to go what's what's the barn door gonna do you know like try out all these transitions you've probably never used and probably never will but you <laughs> you could at least change between like a dissolve and a fade to black or something and then like i said before if you want to go and change and make that that transition last longer you hold transition duration and it's longer or shorter just with using the search dial. Title font selection is another thing you can change with the search dial. You just hold down the title button and move that scroll wheel and you'll get to choose from all the fonts you have installed in your system. If you do a double tap on the transition button, which is also title underneath, so it's a double tap hold, it now is letting me change the font with the search dial uh, by just rotating it here. So it's a double tap hold and you can change your text font and just try a bunch of different stuff out and see what works good, you know? Pretty cool. You can even change the audio level with the search dial. Hold the audio level button, scroll left and right to increase and decrease volume. So if you want to make clips really quiet really quick, that's a great way to do it. So now those drums are silent. Um, and if you want to make them louder, it's just whatever you're parked over. You hold it, scroll right, and we brought it up and there's noise again. <laughs> so that's pretty sweet. Audio level with the search dial. You can also change your marker color with the search dial. So double tap hold and that brings up this wheel. It's a wheel of fortune basically. And let's say I want a green one. It'll drop a green one. Let's go somewhere else later and this guy is going to get pink. It's going to be a double tap hold and we wait until we get a pink one. Uh, let's do the pink or pink one. And um, just, you know, kind of fun way to drop colors on your timeline. Now the snap button's kind of cool. Underneath there are three horizontal lines. And what this does, you double tap and hold it while using the search dial. And you can change your viewer size. So this is kind of seamlessly, it's kind of a buttery smooth experience to make your viewer larger and your timeline smaller, or vice versa. So you double tap the snap button and scroll dial it has those three lines below it we can make this bigger and smaller by just scrolling this sweet machined wheel so that's underneath the snap button one of my favorite features the cut page has is close up what it does you tap it and it gives you a punched in version so if you're working in a 1080 timeline with 4k material you can get like these virtual close in shots which is awesome but maybe it doesn't put it in the right spot. So this head is cut off and we want to fix that. So you uh, hold this close up button and it, you can change the Y position, the vertical position by just holding that down. And we can get the um, singer's face back in the shot. So when it makes the cut, it goes and you can see it, all of it in its glory. So the close-up feature is cool because it actually uses the facial recognition stuff that's in the neural engine of the software. But on some shots like this one in particular, it's not finding faces. It's, I mean, it'll find it on like an interview or something if it's a kind of a standard shot. But having that ability to change that right on the fly is pretty freaking sweet.
Now you're absolutely a search dial master with the speed editor in DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please click the like button. Leave any questions in the comments below. I'd love to find out if you're using the speed editor. Just thanks so much for watching. I'm going to see you in the next video.